Hello, and welcome to our video series on what to expect when buying a house. The topic of this video is title opinion. My name is Heather Wright. I'm a real estate agent in Des Moines, and that's what we're talking about today is title opinions. First of all, when you buy a house in the state of Iowa, Iowa is the last state in the United States that uses abstracts. I guess we're kind of old school that way where I don't have an abstract here on my desk where I could show it to you, but an abstract is on, it's on legal size paper. It's in a booklet. It's usually wrapped in like a red jacket and it is maybe anywhere from a half inch to two inches thick, depending on the age of the property. And when you own a house, you may elect to keep your abstract in storage at the abstractor's office, or the abstractor might call you six months to a year and a half after you have bought your house. And they'll call you to come pick your abstract up because they have run out of storage room. And so when you have that abstract in your hands, put it in a safe place because that costs, you know, four to $600 extra to rebuild it from scratch. So whenever you sell your house, you have to have your abstract updated. And if you're working with me, I will tell you that we're going to estimate that expense to be about $600. But if you don't have your abstract, then it's going to cost $1,000, at least $1,000 to recreate the entire abstract from scratch. So save yourself a few hundred dollars and go out to dinner. <laughs> Use it for the down payment on your next house. So as a buyer, this is all really seller stuff, but one day you're going to be the owner and you might want to sell your house. And so you need to know where that abstract is. Now, if you don't know where it's at, we'll call around to the abstract offices in town and see if we can't find it. And we can usually track down who the last person to have it was. And if it was you, then that might cost you a little bit extra to have it recreated. So anyway, the abstract is the history of the house. And if you were to look at this old document that has dirty, musty smelling paper in it, because it's just so old and it's like yucky rice paper, it's not really, generally it's not the quality of paper that we use today because it's so old. And I remember looking at the last page, which is really the first page of the document, but the way it's done the new stuff is on top and the old stuff is on the bottom. So these abstracts used to track the the wildest things. It's really just the history of the property and the land. But the one that I remember looking at is one of the owners of the property was committed to an asylum. So like they had mental health issues and they were they were sent to an asylum and it was documented in posterity forever in their property abstract. How terrible. I don't know if they do that anymore. Uh, it's actually incredibly dull to read the abstract, but um, the one time I did, I was alarmed about the asylum. So now you know. What happens is the abstractor is going to update the abstract and then send it to a title attorney. And the attorney is going to review the abstract and this thing called pencil notes, whatever the pencil notes are. They're going to review these things. And what they're looking for are liens on the property, something that would prevent the seller from being able to give you, the buyer, clear title. Because in the state of Iowa, when you purchase a house, you're guaranteed to have clear title. And so not clear title would be a lien where maybe the seller didn't pay a bill. I mean, obviously that's a lien. So I'm trying to think one time I had a buyer make an offer on a house and we got the title opinion back. And there were so many liens where I think the, the sellers were husband and wife, and I think they were getting a divorce. And I think maybe the husband had his own company that had gone out of business. And so you could sort of see leading up to him going out of business where he started extending credit. So like they had gotten a furnace that they ended up not paying for. And so the furnace company put a lien on the house for, for whatever the lien cost. And then I assume that they're probably allowed to put extra on for interest owed. I don't know for fact on that. So again, don't quote me, but that's the gist of how a lien works. And so when all of these liens on this particular property added up, 
the sellers could not afford to sell because they were underwater on that property. So my buyer ended up not getting that house, which was too bad. So, you know, in the long run, it was a good thing because my client, the buyer, you wouldn't want to take on someone else's debt. Nobody wants to take on someone else's debt. And so that's the beauty of the title opinion is it makes sure that everything is taken care of through the chain of title that previous owners don't have some sort of title defect out there that would one day affect you in a negative way. So all of that has to be addressed before closing. Now, generally, there are no issues. There are sometimes issues, a common title issue that needs to be resolved is child support. So when a couple gets divorced, one person usually has to pay the other child support. And that is documented on uh, the title opinion to make sure that no one is shirking their responsibility and getting away with it by selling a house. So proof is then has to be obtained that the seller is caught up on their child support. And uh, we have back office crew who knows how to handle those things for our sellers. And so as a buyer, we'll keep you updated that, hey, here are a couple of liens. We understand what's happening. We're going to take the necessary actions. And when I say we, I mean, we're going to manage somebody else to make sure that they do their job. And that will protect you from having to take those responsibilities on. Now, most of the real estate companies in town all have systems and procedures and processes in place to handle these issues as they come up. But once in a while, you'll get a crazy lien that no one knows what to do with. And it will, you know, that's that's when you're happy to have people who know how to solve problems on your side, because that's what we get paid to do, solve problems. And so between lenders and realtors, sometimes we get lawyers involved and get to the bottom of it and satisfy whatever is required from the title opinion. So again, this is a document that is difficult to read because it's in legalese. It's not incredibly exciting, but it is so worth it. And there is a fee that you'll have to pay as part of your closing costs for having the title opinion done. I want to say it's probably around 300 ish dollars. Of course, if you're watching this video in 2030, the price is probably significantly more than that due to time and inflation. But uh, you'll have your title opinion fee. The seller has their abstract fee. So everybody pays for their portion. And the title opinion is really protecting you from their debts. So now you're all caught up on most of the things that you need to know when you're buying a house in Des Moines. And our next video, we're going to talk about homeowners insurance, all of the rest of the things that you have to do to get to the closing table and finally take ownership of your house. Now we're talking excitement.